China, Europe, and the USA. Where to put your money right now? Hello, fellow traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your midday market update for Wednesday, the 11th of January. Are Chinese stocks poised for profits, or will they be poisonous for your portfolio? We look at how our trade trials are viewing three Chinese stocks and share with you how we see them trading. We also have three stocks on the move today, First Solar, Urban Outfitters, and Super Value. We'll take a look at them with our trade triangles and analyze these three stocks in detail. Now, this stock hit our radar screen this morning, and we really like it. It's AKA Steel Holdings. We'll be looking at that stock in detail and giving you some projections. Now, let's go take a look at the charts with Market Club's trade triangle technology. But first, is personal one-on-one -on -one coaching right for you? Give us a call, 877-219-1482. It's a free call, and you'll be pleased you did that. So let's go to the charts right now. And here's your home page, and we're looking at the home page of Adam Hewison. You can see the Welcome Adam Hewison. It's nice to have that welcome when you see it when you come into Market Club. And I'm going to go take a look at our Portfolio Manager. And this is where we look at everything. And we're going to go back here. The S&P 500, if you may remember, we had a signal yesterday. It's back up to a plus 100, meaning the trend is all systems are go. And it's there's the signal right there. You can see, if we, uh, let me take that off the screen. But you can see right there, 1, 2, 9, 2. And it's also right here. So you can actually get into this market a little lower than where we got the original signal. It hasn't changed. This is still what we consider a big base, potentially. Until we see this market reverse, and I would say if it went below the SAR, the PSAR, which is right there, and that comes in today at 1274, I would say if it goes below 1274, I think that may be pause for reflection on the market right now. But for the moment, the trend is your friend, and the trend right now with all of our triangles in a positive green mode is positive. We're looking for that to go higher. So let's go to our next market. It's going to use the triangles here to get to the next market. And that's going to be silver. Silver, we are still, we consider this to be in a bear market. We had a longer term monthly trade triangle, which is negative. We just touched the top of the Donchian trade channels. And you can see we're in an overbought condition in the Williams percent R indicator. There's the Williams percent R indicator right here. And you can see it just looks like potentially we're rolling over. Not to say it can't go higher, but it, it just losing its zap. We said if it closes a strong close over 30, then we'd have to reconsider some of the things. But for the moment, I think we'll see this more market more on the defensive. So let's go to the next market. We've got a lot of markets to cover today, and I want to get as many as we can in them before the time element is through. Um, but again, this is gold. It's moved out of the Donchian trade channel. It's a plus 70, meaning it's an emerging trend. However, the monthly is negative. Now, that did occur during silly season, so we don't put a lot of faith in that because it was in very thin markets, and you can see the action right here. The market moved down dramatically, then came right back up into the channel, and since then it's been basically going higher. I think we've had a number of days positive. We've actually moved from the 1520 level all the way up to the 1640 level. And if you remember, we had a long-term trend line in this market coming in. In fact, what we can do is scope this out for, uh, let's just take this out for a couple of years and just take a look at it. And let's just take uh, some of this off the screen. It's easy to do this with Mark Club. Just click on the Dungeon Trail, takes it off, and the Parabolic takes that off. And it leaves us pretty much with what we want, and let's take the monthly off. But you can draw a trend line and this is what I was saying. You can go from this level here, and this is way back on the 23rd of October in 2008, and just sort of zip it up here. And you can see basically it did break br briefly below, but it came right back up. And if we look at this closer, and we probably, if we look at just a close only chart, which may be a better indication, you can see, look at how that just zap stopped exactly where it should have stopped. It's still in a longer-term bull market. Even though our monthly trade triangle is down, I think that was a um, an, an anomaly where we had the silly season, thin markets, but it still looks, if you're looking at this on just a simple line, uh, trend line, which we love simplicity, you have to say the trend is still up. This is an opportunity probably to be a buyer longer term. But let's see how this plays out. The one thing we'd put another trend line in, and that would be from the highs here. And we take that down, and you can see. So we're just sort of, I think we'll consolidate a little bit more.
before we start going up because I think with all the problems in the world, with all the money that's out there, the fiat money, I think the value, the store of value is going to be gold eventually. So let's see how that plays out. But let's go to our next market. And the next market is copper. And again, copper is pretty much the same thing. It's sort of in a trading range. Uh, you can see if we put this in, let's get it closer in uh, see the last three months. You can see we're just sort of moving sideways. And if we put our Donchian trade channels in and also our parabolic, you'll see we sort of just at the top of the range here. So really nothing to get excited about yet in this market. But I definitely want to pay attention to copper because obviously demand from China, demand in the U.S. is going to say economic recovery somewhere along the line here. But it really isn't there yet. This market's still in a very, very broad trading range. And that's easily put in just with the with our illustrator here. You can see how you know we've had this this line here and also this sort of just meandering along doesn't have a strong feeling I would be much more positive on this market if we were to see it move over let's say uh, the 370 level this level right here probably I think that would be a much that'd be a very strong signal but right now signals are mixed and uh, you are probably if we take this off it's, and put our trade triangles on, which we can do very easily. You can see that we have a plus 70 possible emerging trend, longer term negative, intermediate, and short term positive. And I think that's what you have to look at right now. Not a strong trend, but it, eventually this trend will break into something that's good, and we want to be on top of it. So let's go to our next market, and this is crude oil. Crude oil continues to be in a strong bullish market, and we talked about this uh, yesterday and also. What we're looking at in this market, of course, is the potential for this to be a very strong energy field uh, that's going to um, push this market higher. This is, a, again, we really need to see this market close over the, I think, the 104. If we get a close over this level, I think we're going to push the market up. Um, but basically, you can see for the last, what is that, six, seven days, like here, we've just sort of been going sideways. Uh, but we need to get this market uh, over the highs that we had at 103.60. So a close over 104 should be viewed a as a positive for this market. So let's see how that plays out. Let's clear the screen, go to our next market. And the next market we're looking at is the dollar index. Excellent, excellent action here today. We went up once again, uh, tested the 81.50 level, actually 81.49.30 to be exact. Uh, but the this is a good move. And certainly we want to see the market go over there. But the trend in the dollar, as you can just, I will scope this out just a little bit further, you can see it's been pretty positive in terms of just moving up uh, pretty steadily. And if we put our close only, you can see we just sort of had this nice trending market going up. It looks to me potentially, if we look at this a little bit further back, uh, and we put our Telestrator on. Just give me one second. Let me get that back on the screen. But if you look at our Telestrator, this is a very, very important level we, when we broke over this level here. So it sort of broke over. So you can measure from this level here, which is, I'm going to take it 75 up to 79.50. So that is 4.5. Then we add that to 79.50. And just going to do this very simple. Uh, we're looking at 84 as a target zone on the upside. We're currently trading at 81.34. So I think the two things are going to happen. There's a basket of currencies, of course, in the dollar index. But I would think the euro is going to get beaten up quite substantially to move this higher uh, on the index. So let's clear the screen. And let's go to our next market. Next market we're looking at is going to be the Reuters Jeffries CRB index, which we, uh, we've all talked about. You can see we're, we're sort of. We're at the top of the trading channel again here, uh, like just like we were here. Here, uh, I think we'll see more consolidation. I just don't see this market just zooming up. We do have our monthly negative from 335. The market's currently 314, so you can see how much further this resistance around the 315 area, which we mentioned in today's blog. Also, you've got the weekly, which is positive, and the daily, and that's caused this, some, this sort of little rally we've seen. But I think eventually we'll see the market turn down and possibly come back and test the 305 level. So we'll see how that plays out. But generally speaking, that's how we're seeing that market. Now we're going to go to um, some of the other markets we talked about. We're going to be looking at the euro dollar. Of course, that's under everyone's microscope right now. And as we said in the blog yesterday, somebody asked me, well, everyone's bearish on this. 
we want that reverse it. No, not necessarily. With currencies, it's a little bit different from uh, stocks and also from other markets like futures. But this is a big, big, multi-trillion dollar market, and it doesn't turn around on a dime. So you can see, I'm going to put my, um, let me just get a little closer. Let's do a three-month chart. Let's do, a, and you can see, obviously, where we are today, we're down, trading around 26.98. This is just below the 127 level. And I think the lowest close we've seen in this market, let me just get this right for you. The lowest close you've seen in this market is 126.95. So we are very, very close to making a new low close in the U.S., which will, I think, carry through to uh, Europe. But very oversold, yes, we know that. But the market just seems to want to go lower, just eroding lower. And you see how we have these sort of periods when it just sort of, uh, let me get my telestrator on just so we get this right for you. So you have these periods where it just sort of looks like it's everything's okay, it just sort of goes sideways and boom, down. Boom, down. Boom, down. I think we're in a similar period. I think that's how we just sort of get into this stepping down and it's just uh, loss of confidence in Europe and certainly uh, the politicians over there are not doing anybody any favors except trying to hold on to their jobs. So let's clear the screen, go to our next market, and we're going to be going back to our portfolio. We're going to be looking at the Sohu, and that's a Chinese stock, and we're going to look at it right now. So let's take a look at this stock, and it's a plus 70, so we know it's an emerging trend, but has it changed? I don't think so. This is a monthly red green on the weekly and green on the daily. But look, since November, if you just very simply, you can draw these things in. And this is how I like to see the markets just very visually. Just draw this like this. It's kind of like a box. And you really need this market to go, in my opinion, probably over the 56 level. We're currently trading right around, I think, what is that, 50... Uh, around 52, 53, so it really needs to go over the 56 level of mine. Might have a strong close over there, and then I think you've probably got something going on the upside. But right now, I don't think it's a place to park your money, in my opinion. So let's go to our next market. Let's take everything off the screen, of course, and clear this up. Um, and the next market we're going to be looking at is another Chinese stock, and uh, one you may have heard of, and that's the PetroChina and this is what I like. This actually, I'll, I quite like this chart, uh, and I'll give you the reasons why. Here's the former resistance zone right here, which is just uh, hold on. Here's the former resistance zone, which is really right just around here. That's the previous high. We sort of broken over there. We've got our monthly trade triangle right here, and that came in at 136.88. The market's currently trading at 139.66. And it looks like we're consolidating. I wouldn't take this as a distribution. I think this is a area that we're consolidating, and the market's going to go higher from these levels. I would not be surprised to see this market pop up. And of course, with crude oil doing what it's doing, this could well be the catalyst to push this market higher. So I would definitely want to be long this market. And uh, based on our triangles, you've got all the signals, and it looks good to us. So let's clear this off the screen again. And let's look at our third Chinese stock we're looking at, and that's going to be Baidu. And uh, this is uh, actually uh, still negative. It's an emerging trend, plus 70, but the monthly is still down, and we're sort of getting towards the top of the range. I am not so enthusiastic about this. And let me just do one other thing. I want to put our uh, we'll Fibonacci tool in here, so pull this down. So we're really kind of right in that zone, the 127, 12 area. So right on a 61% uh, retracement level, I think probably we're going to see this market pull back from these levels. We're overbought. Uh, not to say it can't go higher, but we're overbought. We're at the top of the channel, and we've had a 61% retracement. It looks to me you see some pullback here maybe in the next several days. But we'll watch that carefully for you. So let's go to our next market. In the next market is Urban Outfitters, and this was not good. We had a signal here on the monthlies and longer term, and then we had a sharp pullback. You can see all the way down today, down to a plus 55, so it's a trading range. Uh, obviously, the uh, kicked in at 26.10, the intermediate and the short term kicked in 
as being negative. However, this is quite a shock. Uh, this is very, very unusual for us to see something like this. Now, I want to show you, as I say, I want to show you this in Market Club and see these things do happen. Uh, there's no program in the world that's 100% right on every single trade. But this was the news today. Of course, we actually talked about this a couple of days ago. We did not like the way this market closed, um, even though we had the signal, because it really was on top of the channel, and it came right back and closed like in a uh, doji line, which is not a good sign. That's usually a sign of a reversal. So let's see how that plays out. These will be other doji lines right back here uh, that obviously – pushed the market higher, and here again, pushed the market higher. So I think basically, I think this is one that's best left alone. I wouldn't be jumping in to buy this market after even today's action. Uh, we may see a little recovery back to 26, 27, but it's uh, it's not that great a market for us to look at. But let's go to our next market, it's Super Value. Super Value also came under pressure, but guess what? This is in a downtrend anyway, so all of these signals kicked in. And again, you can have rallies, counter trend rallies in these markets, but eventually the trend, let's get this out again. Let's see, we had a signal back here. Let's put this up here, take this off. We had a signal back here at 844. This is on August 1st of 2011, so we've been in this market. Even the ups and downs and ups and downs, it's still caught the trend down today. It was not a surprise, and that's the bottom line. That's what you have to remember. So again, let's uh, go to our next market. And that's going to be the stock first solar, which is really being beaten up. You can see we're short from 132 on the monthlies. It's currently trading at 42. And again, uh, people say, well, you know, you should have been long. You should have done this. No, this, we know the odds are in your favor when you're trading with the trade trials. This is a very, very good example of this taking place. Has the trend turned around? No, it has not. It's still in a negative trend. I suspect that if we take this closer in and we put in our Fibonacci retracement levels, you can see, yep, we're just pretty much there, 43.63 as uh, a 61% retracement. We're towards the high end of the uh, Donchian trade channel. I would not be surprised to see this market come back and test those lows again around 35. Let's see how that plays out. But let's go to the next market. And the next market is the one we really like, AK Steel Holdings. The symbol is AKS. Love this market. I'll tell you the reason why. So if we scope this out, look at the energy base on this market. And I think this is what really needs, this is the story I think it really needs to be told. Because you're going back all the way you're going back, let me just take this off for a second. You're going back all the way to, hang on, just one second, August, and you can see this market has built what I consider to be a significant base. And if you just go like a, along the top here, and you can see, boom, it's broken out. To break out to the upside. If you go from the lows here, we saw around $6 a share to the, let's say, the 9 level, that gives you $3. three Add 3 to 9, takes you up to 12, which I would say would that, would, that would be a target zone. And also, if we take everything off the screen and we look at our Fibonacci tool, and we go from the highs right around here, oh, that's the highs here, and drag that down. Takes you to 1114 to a 1246. So somewhere in that la level, which we targeted as an upside target zone, so you also run into Fibonacci. So I like that kind of cluster. It sort of makes sense to me. I like the base, and it would look to me this is an excellent, excellent uh, trade. Uh, the m plus you had the monthly trade trial and clicked in today. So members saw this right away on the smart scan. And if we take this off the screen. And that came in today at 9.35. The market's currently trading at 9.52. Very, very good performance. You can see the signals right here. I think we'll see this market go higher up to the 12 area. So let's see how that plays out. But that's pretty much everything we have today. But again, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one market club coaching, give us a call. It's a free consultation and a free call, 877-219-1482. And don't forget, we have our show tonight at 5 p.m. We get tons of questions that came in this time. We're going to be covering a lot of different markets. You don't want to miss that show. It's tonight at 5 o'clock on the Market Club TV channel. I'm Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tonight at 5 p.m.